The following is a Shaw TV public affairs presentation. Constituency Report is produced as a public service by members of the BC Legislature through the facilities of Shaw TV. Hello and welcome to Constituency Report on Shaw TV. I'm Megan Black here, your host, and with me today in the studio we have Lana Popham, the MLA for Saanich South. And a lot has changed recently. You're now the Agriculture Minister as well. That's true. I, I am so excited. I can't tell you. It's been a dream come true of mine, and uh, I feel so grateful to be in this position. Perfect. Uh, well, thank you very much for joining us here today. And if you're watching from home, you may have noticed that our set has changed a little bit here. We're going to be doing something special today. Uh, going to be doing a bit of a cooking show. So we actually have true. two recipes that we're preparing for you today. And Lana is going to talk to us about that. Yes, I can never miss an opportunity <laughs> to talk about food or to be cooking food for people. So um, this is the way that we've done a few constituency reports. And not only is it a chance to talk about what's available seasonally and give uh, new ideas on how to use that produce but also a way to talk about agriculture because agriculture comes to our tables. Yeah that's very true and I mean we're so lucky here on Vancouver Island and in British Columbia in general to have the resources that we have to be able to eat local. That's very true and you know coming from the South Island I've always thought that we knew what we were doing with agriculture and with supporting farmers but I've had nine years of traveling the province and every community I go in has people just like us on the South Island that are supporting agriculture, farmers that are passionate about what they're doing, and also challenges that we face right across the province. Just because we come from more small scale farming on the South Island, we face some of the same barriers that people face around the province that have larger scale agriculture going on. So for example, um, accessing land, young farmers trying to get, or new farmers even, trying to get onto the land base. And so I have a mandate to address that in our our three-part platform, which is so incredible. You know, I, I, I can't believe that I get to talk on the government side now because for eight years, I say that, you know, I was lighting my hair on fire over issues every chance I could get. And now as minister, I'm kind of in the line of fire, but luckily I've had eight years of training wheels on. And so um, as we meet with stakeholder groups, they're mostly groups that I've already met with. I've already heard their concerns over the eight years. And so now it's just sort of, you know, um, putting the pedal to the metal and getting going on some of these things that I think and our government thinks will support agriculture in the province. So we have a super exciting platform. It's called Grow BC, Feed BC, and Buy BC. And, um, but before I give you any more tidbits <laughs> on that, I think we better start our yeah, recipe. We so what we're gonna be making while we talk about this exciting platform is a kale salad. Now I've already um, done a version of this kale salad previously, but because kale is seasonally available almost everywhere right now, anyone who gets a community supported box program is starting to get a lot of kale, right? Cause it's the time, it's cooler season. It does really well in the cooler weather. We have cabbage from um, Mitchell's farm. Out on the peninsula, cabbage is another amazing winter vegetable that we can use. Apples, of course, from the Okanagan that got brought to me by fruit growers in the Okanagan. These apples are storage apples, so you can keep them all through the winter and use them in salads. I've got a bag of amazing hazelnuts here. I have a mandate to uh, increase the amount of acreages we have in hazelnuts in British Columbia, so I can't miss an opportunity to talk about hazelnuts. And we're gonna be using BC eggs here. Um, we do have lemons, which don't grow in BC, although that's not true. We do have a greenhouse on North Saanich that is growing lemons. Oh, wow. Uh, we have got um, red Russian garlic from the peninsula. And then we've got some seasoning. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna actually ask you to get started. All right. So we have a bit of kale here, and we're not gonna make a huge salad because um, we don't probably have enough time, but um, I always like to leave some lunch behind for the wonderful film crew here. 
at Shaw because uh, they do such an amazing service for us by letting us do this. So with this kale, so I love kale, so I don't have the same rules as other people, but you have to cut it very thinly. So as thinly as you possibly can. I don't de-stem it or anything like that because I just think that's part of its charm. Not everybody would agree, but um, I do. I like the flavor of kale, especially as we head into the cooler temperatures because it tends to sweeten and become more crisp. So normally I would chop it up like this, put it in a big bowl and um, I would sometimes, if it seems a little bit tough, you can soak it in water for a little bit uh, and that tends to, to crisp it up again. So okay. we put that in this bowl. So I'm gonna put that right there for now. Now I'm gonna show you one of my most favorite tools I've that I use. This. this is a garlic <laughs> press. So it's not your usual type of garlic press, but it's one that I like because it's easy to clean. So I'm gonna move this actually over here so we can I can show you how. It's very fast, but as I said, there's nothing on it to break like traditional garlic presses and uh, it's super easy cleanup. So all you do is you put it on your cutting board. I don't know if you can see this. It's got holes in it. I'll bring it down where you can see it. And then you push onto the garlic and you kind of rock it and you've got perfectly crushed garlic right there. So we are gonna make a dressing for this kale. So you can actually, the next thing we're gonna do is cut a lemon, okay. not a North Saanich lemon, of course, fortunately, <laughs> not but time, uh, yeah. not this time. We're gonna cut that and we're gonna squeeze the juice out of it. Now That's while we're perfect. doing this, I'm yes. you can tell me just how the transition has been going and you know oh. what you've been up to as the minister. It's amazing. So, so I'll, I'll just reflect on our mandate. So Grow BC is all about supporting farmers and the land base. And so that addresses getting young people onto land. It, it includes revitalizing the agricultural land reserve because we won't have agriculture in BC unless we protect the agricultural land reserve. So we're going to be doing uh, a little bit of a consultation for about four months while we get input from the public on what they think the important things about the agricultural land reserve are and how we would address those. And so we're hearing, um, you know, there's too much development on agricultural land. Richmond seems to be a hot spot for that right now. Yeah. And really the message that we need to put out there is that the agricultural land reserve is not a land bank for housing. It's a land bank for food growing. That was the intent when it came into um, legislation uh, over 40 years ago. And so we've seen a lot of pressures build on that. But I think, you know, when there's food security, you can actually grab the olive oil, which also doesn't come from BC at this point. <laughs> but we, I did just drive by an olive orchard on Salt Spring Island recently. Oh. Yes. So um, uh, Housing Bank for Development, it's not for food, it is. Um, this was an idea that was put into place to protect our future, right? And the future is now. So as far as I'm concerned, this is the moment for agriculture because um, as, you, as you look at uh, different areas of the province, climate change is changing the way that we're farming. Areas in the north that had maybe less agricultural value are starting to come into their own. We see cherry orchards moving north. So this land that we put aside is only 5% of our province. And so everything that we do as far as policies that support farming, the foundation of that is farmland. And so we have to address that. We have to address getting young people onto farming. We have to address housing on farmland because right now part of the challenge with farm workers is they don't have anywhere to live. We need labor on farms. That's the way it works. Yeah. And so addressing that. Um, while you're, uh, could you pass over the uh, olive oil again? because I'm going to get ready to do something else. Well, you add this. This is maple right. syrup. Now, this isn't from BC, but it is from Canada, of course. Yeah. I love maple syrup. Um, we're going to add some salt and pepper. Oh, the top's on there. You can, you can do that if you want. So um, just back to this recipe for a moment. I love this recipe because it's super nutritious. And one of the things that it does is it stores in the fridge. And so um, if you want, you can chop that apple. That's pretty much it for the dressing. Uh, I, easy. <laughs> it's a super easy dressing and the lemon juice kind of tenderizes the kale. So okay. we're gonna cube that because that's gonna go right in to our bowl of kale. And we're gonna toss it with the dressing. 
So that's partly uh, part of our platform, Grow BC. So we're going to do everything we can to get people farming and to get production up. Now the second part of our platform is called Feed BC. And this is a game changer for agriculture in the province because it addresses institutional buying. Mm -hmm. And so hospitals buy a ton of food for their food system, That's as right. well as extended care. And um, for years I've been taking a look at other jurisdictions who are using their local procurement contracts to basically uh, make very stable uh, domestic markets for, for farmers to sell into. Not just farmers, but food processors, because there's a different type of processing for institutional food, yeah. right? And so um, as we look at, for example, the lower mainland, we have a hospital zone. It's kind of the southwest zone of the province. So this is Vancouver and the Sunshine Coast. They buy about, just in hospital meals alone, they buy about $50 million worth of just hospital meals. That doesn't include extended care or anywhere else that we procure in that area. So around $50 million. So we're saying, let's move that up to about 30% of what we uh, are producing and selling into the system from BC. Mostly we, um, we source everything outside of the province for the hospital system. This would be an amazing thing for farmers in the province. And so I'm excited about that. It's worked in other jurisdictions. It's not our idea. We're just making sure that we put in an idea that works for farmers. That's incredible. Sometimes you don't think about just how large some of these industries are and how we could be capitalizing on that to that actually help true. people in our own province. That is true. Now we just have a few moments left okay. before we have to take a okay. break. Okay. So okay. We'll, uh... I'm gonna get going on this <laughs> recipe, which too much talking, not enough cooking, but I'm listening. Now, while we're doing this, yeah. uh, we're actually going to show the audience some photos okay. about what you've been up to in the ministry. So I know that uh, Lana's just cracking some I'm eggs cracking here. I'm cracking some eggs, but I'm paying attention. So <laughs> I went to an amazing food forum. Um, it's, a, it's a group of local food activists that get together and talk about food policy on the ground. So these are farmers getting together, food security activists. Enjoyed a wonderful lunch with them. I was able to address them. The greatest thing about that was that I used to farm with them because I was a farmer. Wow, so yeah. as I'm addressing them as the minister, I'm looking at my friends and I, you know, I've always promised them, I'm going to come back and I'm going to farm with you. Once we fix everything, I'm coming back to farming. So yes, yeah, so it was a wonderful, wonderful day. And this is of course, uh, AGM of the Greenhouse Growers Association. And um, uh, that, that wonderful guy that's got his arm around me there is Ravi. He's an amazing greenhouse grower out in Langley and uh, he and his wife operate an amazing business and she's involved in educating kids in our school system on agriculture. So these eggs are frying. We're trying to get them to fry. Uh, this is a tour I went on Salt Spring Island. It's actually a mussel nursery. So they, take, they develop mussel seeds here that go out onto our shellfish farms up in uh, around Cortez Island. And I learned so much about the shellfish industry over the last couple of months. It's an industry that I totally love and support. Basically, you hang these mussel, or oyster, they're oysters, oyster seeds on ropes. Two years later, you harvest them. You don't feed them. They kind of feed off of the natural environment. And I love it. So I can't wait to learn more about that and being more involved with the shellfish industry in British Columbia. So it's safe to say you've been incredibly busy over the last I, four months. I am, but I always have time to cook. Exactly. <laughs> this burner's not. Um, we're gonna we're gonna finish finish these eggs when we come back. All right. Okay. Perfect. Well, thanks again for joining us here. We are just gonna take a short break here, and we'll be back in a few moments with another uh, recipe. Another recipe. And, that's and right. And a taste of this one. So lots more to learn uh, with Lana Popham here, your MLA for Sandwich South, and we're also going to put Lana's contact details up on the screen, so make sure you take note of that.
Well, welcome back to Constituency Report on Shaw TV. I'm here with Lana Popham, the MLA for Saanich South and the Agriculture Minister. And in our first half, we uh, started on a recipe. We have some eggs cooking here. That's so right. So we're actually going to jump right back into this. We are. So I'm just going to serve this up because our eggs are ready. So. I just usually plate this or put it in a nice big bowl so you can get um, a look at everything that is up for offer here. So you want to be able to see those nuts and those apples. Now, I this is the twist for today. I put on two fried eggs and that to me is a meal. And um, it's kind of like a Vancouver Island of Niswa salad with nothing to do with Niswa. Well, <laughs> Except the delicious. egg. Yeah, thank you. So. Um, this is, I would say, one of my go-to meals in the winter and the summer, and I just change what goes on top. So you can put grilled salmon or you can put some sort of seafood, and this salad is hearty, so it withstands heat of whatever you're, you're putting on top and of it. it smells Thank delicious. Thank you. So I'll give, the, I'll give you one last look here before I put that away. Okay. And now, if you have just joined us and you didn't catch the first part of our little cooking show here, you can find the recipe on Lana Popham's website. That's right. Which I, you know, I try to add recipes quite a bit, but, um, and I don't think anybody's sick of this one yet. So we're going to move on to the next recipe, which is a slaw with a uh, Japanese dressing. And so you're going to be doing a lot of chopping okay. and spinning here. So um, we're going to use uh, that piece of cabbage over there as the base. And I'll do that part while you um, can shred some beets. We've got some red beets, traditional red sugar beets. And then we've got a golden beet over there. So if you want, you can just start um, spinning those. Now, uh, we were talking about Feed BC. And Feed BC is um, part of our procurement contract. Now, I had such an interesting conversation with somebody from Abbotsford who makes uh, apple filling and other types of fruit fillings. And I said, would there be a chance that you could maybe entertain making applesauce for the hospital system? And could you use BC product? Could you use BC apple? And they absolutely saw there was no reason why they couldn't do that, like change their business plan in order to take advantage of a stable domestic market. So that's why I think it's a bit of a game changer for agriculture. Currently, if we had to, we could not do 30% of what's required in the hospital system. So I really think that this is like changing a giant cruise ship around. It can't happen overnight, yeah. but it's such a good policy that regardless of who's in government, it should be able to um, stick because um, I think when, once farmers get used to this idea, once we get processors across the province, specifically uh, making products for this system, it's really going to be um, something that is like a shot in the economic arm of rural communities. I'm famous for saying, I, I think that agriculture has the uh, opportunity to unlock prosperity right across the province. And we see rural communities like 100 Mile House, like Quinnell, they're just aching for some sort of new economic development. And agriculture isn't new but it's certainly tried and tested, and it is, it, it's something that you can depend on. And so that's why I'm super excited about it. So I think I have the best ministry ever. So sure. this, one thing about this recipe, that's great. So we've got golden beets, we've got some red mm. beets, we've got, and this is so nice, it looks so pretty. We've got some um, locally sprouted bean sprouts. And uh, what we're gonna do is make this next, the next fabulous dressing. And what I like about this dressing is it takes a whole apple. And I'm just going to do this really quickly. Um, it takes a whole apple and you blend it up. And so I don't know if anybody on the South Island has ever been to Japanese Village, but this dressing is a Japanese Village salad dressing that was given to us. So um, I'm, I'm excited about that. If you want, you can chop that up a little yeah, bit, put sure. it in the blender. Now what we're going to add is we're going to add some rice vinegar we're gonna add which we don't make here but possibly one day we've got some soy sauce we've got um, some more oil that we're gonna add and uh, garlic again I bet you're just you, you're excited to use I this am. garlic thing so <laughs> why don't we try and do that okay. now the third part of our platform is called by BC and of course this is also not a new idea it was a successful idea back in the 90s, and it's a marketing program. It's one of the most recognized agricultural 
marketing programs that we've ever had in British Columbia. You have to push really hard. All right. <laughs> you did it. Grease. Excellent, excellent. So you can just scrape some of that off into there. Uh, so by BC is still one of the most recognized. So if you talk to a consumer about by BC, they know what it means. Yeah. They don't have to try and figure it out. It's not like a puzzle. And so we're bringing that back and we're bringing it back stronger than ever. Because of course now we have a modern way to do it. We've got social media. We've got all these other ways that we can um, uh, use by BC right across the province. We've launched something called by BC eat drink local and that's a partnership with restaurants now the restaurant industry and the agriculture industry are very critical to each other those are partnerships that um you know i always say farmer every farmer needs a chef every chef needs a farmer and um, it's very true because once consumers go into a restaurant they see something highlighted that's grown in their own community they're going to want that and sometimes it's just a matter of trying something for the first time and then you start using it at home and so i'm super excited about that the restaurant industry has always been a partner of mine when even when i was a farmer and so um yeah so i'm really really happy to have that going on it's in may we were supposed to launch it in the summer but as you know, we had a horrendous forest fire season. Yeah, that's true. And we really wanted the, um, the caribou to be involved in this launch, especially after the fires. So we're going to be up there in May, making sure that restaurants throughout the fire zones are really highlighted as we bring uh, farmers and chefs together there. Because we don't want people to forget about those areas, you know? Uh, we want them to support those areas. Okay, so I think we're good here. Um, we're going we're gonna to put this in this amazing Nutribullet, which is like this fancy blender. It was lent to us, so we're gonna hope it works, right? <laughs> Let's see how this goes. That's yeah. right. Amazing. Amazing. So we've got this fabulous salad. Now the apple adds a little bit of texture, but it also um, adds a sweetness. And so that's what I call, this, this recipe is what I call shred. And um, these are all things that are, again, available seasonally right through the winter. It's got a ton of nutrition in it. And um, I just think it's a winner. Kids love it. You can, if you're barbecuing over the winter, you can have it with a piece of steak or a piece of chicken. And it's really a full meal. So this is what we call shred. And um, it's delicious. Smell. Ooh, I know. So one that does smell good. more things that you can add to it. You can add shredded carrot. One thing that I think is really great is that these stems of the broccoli, which um, a lot of people just throw them out. They're like, yeah. you just want the crowns. Chop this up and add it into the shred, and it's amazing. It adds uh, crunchiness. It adds texture, and again, packed with nutrition. So That's you could add carrots. Tip. Yeah, yeah. So those are my two recipes this time. Um, uh, the by BC the Feed BC and the Grow BC. It's something that um, I'm very proud of. I helped develop it, but there's absolute support from the Premier. He loves carrots. I know that to be true. And um, he supports agriculture like we haven't seen for a very long time from a Premier. And so for me as Agriculture Minister, that's a dream come true. Wow, well I can say for sure both of these recipes look delicious, smell delicious. Again, you can find the uh, recipe on Lana's website. Yeah. Uh, and more recipes. That's Anything perfect. Anything seasonal. <laughs> and I know we've been talking a lot about food, but then there's also drink. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what's been happening with the local beer industry? You there's bet. been a lot going yeah. on. Yeah, so currently, well before we came, became government, um, there was a bit of an uneven playing field with uh, regulations around liquor production on agricultural land. And so uh, wineries were able to, if they're over two hectares, they were able to grow 50% of their products uh, where they were operating and operating their winery. And then they were able to go out and source from other vineyards around the province 50%. This wasn't true for breweries or distilleries or meaderies. And so I've had a lot of uh, input from around the province that people wanted those same opportunities and they wanted that, that uh, field uh, evened out. So what we did is we changed a regulation to allow it to happen. And so what has stemmed from that is there's been some great conversations with barley growers around the province. We have amazing barley farmers from up in the Peace River area. And um, there's a malter up in the interior. Malted barley is what you need for making beer. 
And so these are partnerships with farmers that will form. And so one of the things when you change regulations around production on agricultural land, reserve land, is that you really don't want it to be the thin edge of the wedge for development, right? So you want to be able to do processing, but you don't want to take it take away from the primary goal of that land, which is to grow food. And so this, I think, actually incents more farming in the province. And we're going to keep our eye on it. But I think just from the conversations I have, we've got opportunities to um, build more malting facilities around the province, have um, malters where barley growers can send their barley into and have contracts throughout the year. And so so it's a, just a small change, but it makes a big difference. That's so great to hear. So we really are making things better for not just the farmers, but small business owners and consumers at the end of the day that as well. That is so true. And you know, farming's a business. So people say, you know, the farmers do that because they love the lifestyle. Farmers love it because, you know, it's a way of making a living. Yeah. They just happen to love what they do. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been so happy to hear about what's been going on in the ministry, what you've been up to with that. Have you had much time in your community? You know, what are you hearing from you people? You know, my love, I love, our, I love farming, I love agriculture, I love this province, but I also love Saanich South. And so I have been making time. And, you know, I, I promised, I was so fortunate to be reelected in May. And I told uh, the people that voted for me that, and my, constitu my whole constituency, that don't worry, I'm not going to abandon you. And one of the things I've done for over eight years is I've always made sure we have public meetings and forums for my constituents to come in and talk to me about things. Well, right now, because there's a proposal for electoral reform and the way of, we're going to legislate changing the way that we elect our legislative assembly in British Columbia, going from first past the post to a different type of electoral reform, um, I said it's a time to, to talk about it. It's a time to bring people in to the constituency and have a public forum. So that's what we did just a couple weeks ago. And I think we actually have some photos oh, okay, of that great. and some other things Excellent. that have been going on Good. in so, your community. So great. We'll oh, this those. is so, this first picture actually is of uh, a new site for Power to Be, and it's on the old. Prospect Lake Golf Course site. Now, Power to Be is an amazing organization. I've always supported it. It's um, an organization that brings kids into nature to address some of the challenges they might be having. So whether this is um, uh, challenges in school, challenges at home, or developmental delays, they uh, come into nature and the camp actually addresses their problems by bringing them out into nature, out into the forest. Some of these kids have never seen a forest before. Some of them have never swam in a lake before. So this, um, this Prospect Lake golf course was run by the Steele family and they've signed a 25 year lease for I think it's a dollar a year just because they support what this program's doing. So it's a new lease on life for power to be and I wish them all the success and it was great to have a tour. All right. Perfect. Great. Oh, so in Cordova Bay on the Papi Highway, we have something that has made such a huge difference just below Claremont School. It's a left-hand turn signal. Doesn't sound like much, but boy, has it helped traffic. And so I, I've been working with the Ministry of Transportation, and um, just a couple days after Halloween, they installed this left-hand turn signal, and everybody is ecstatic. The little just things, right? another <laughs> little thing, and it's made a big difference. This is from our electoral reform forum that we had in the community. We had about 65 people there. It was a great discussion. We had political scientists from UVic that came in to address questions and we've promised to do another one in, in sort of uh, early spring to as we kind of move along on this legislative change. We're going to bring the community back to talk about what's happening and, and what they can expect and there's people are hungry for it. And that's a great thing to do as well. You know, you are so busy with your role as minister, but this is an opportunity for people in your community to come together, to have a face to face with you and that's to really true. hear what's going on and to be able yeah. to contribute to that discussion. So, yeah, and I can fantastic. say that it is it's tougher than I thought being a minister. I'll just admit that. And so some days you leave the legislature and it you, you feel a bit a little bit rattled, especially over question period. But you go back into your community and you touch people. Uh, touch base with people that voted for you and people that you represent and it changes everything. It reminds you of why you why you wanted to be a politician to begin with. Well, I think that's a, a great way to end the show here. Thank you so much for watching and thank you very much to uh, Minister Popham for joining us here today on thank Constituency you. Report on Shaw TV.